Welcome to this week's edition of Mountain Outhouse News. I'm your host, Jam Jam. This is the craziest shit to happen in running this week. This week's stories include the Courtney DeWalter shortney takeover, Ryan Hall's continued foray into trail running, and a Cocodona 250 preview. The Grand Canaria World Trail Majors was back this week with a double header on opposite ends of the globe. First, we head to Japan for the Mount Fuji 100, the race formerly known as Ultra Trail Mount Fuji, or UTMF. The event was live streamed in both English and Japanese as we watched Courtney DeWalter put on an absolute show. This was Courtney's second World Trail Majors race of the year after winning Trans Grand Canaria back in February. She was hot out of the gates and her women's victory was never really in question. She steadily moved her way up the field and finished third overall in 1921-22, just 11 minutes back of men's winner Guomin Dang of China, and 30 seconds behind second place. One of my favorite moments of the day, seeing Japanese legend Kabaraki wearing bib number one in complete rock star mode, starting at the very back of the fourth wave of this year's race. Let's next pop over to the Atlantic and the second World Trail Majors event of the weekend, Madeira Island Ultra Trail, or Mute. Taking the win here in the premier 115K distance was Courtney's Solomon teammate, Martina Valmasoy, who ran in style, rocking the full short knees kit with long shorts and a baggy top. What say you, Outhouse Nation? Is this style here for good? Even Lucy Bartholomew showed her support by rocking the full short knees outfit. It's too bad it's already sold out, and we really need a men's fit. On the men's side of Mute, ASICS athlete Ben Diamond took home the win in 1352-49. Back stateside, the final stop on the 2024 Hoka Golden Ticket Circuit brought us to Auburn, California in this year's edition of the Canyons by UTMB race. On another new route this year, we saw a stacked field take too much of the back half of the Western States 100 course and vie for the final spots for this year's race. It was another show-stopping day for the women, where we saw Katie Scheid not only pull away from the strong ladies with a 50-minute margin of victory, but place sixth overall amongst a deep and stacked men's field. Katie already having a spot in Western States after her second place last year left the golden ticket race to play out amongst the rest of the ladies' field. MK Sullivan nabbed the first ticket in 10.01, and Anna Cassius was next up in 1024. On the men's side, it was quite a day for men's winner Rod Farvard, who learned some hard-fought lessons at this year's Black Canyon to execute, one could argue, a perfect day on the Western States Trail. Rod had a commanding win, pulling away from early co-race leader Stephen Kirsch after he stopped to tie his shoe. Rod was first in 844, with Drew Holman second in 851. This was a sweet moment when Drew, who declined the golden ticket, offered it to third place Peter Engdahl of Sweden, who graciously accepted. Will we see Ryan Hall race an ultramarathon soon? He could be one step closer as he continues to dive deeper into the culture of trail ultra running. He was spotted on a Grand Canyon cowboy loop with the likes of Chris Vargo, Jim Walmsley, and Cordis Hall. No relation? Ryan has been dabbling in mountain quests over the past couple years as he gets back into running. He ran from his doorstep to the top of Humphreys Peak in Flagstaff and was seen doing hill sprints at 13,000 feet on the Maroon Bells Loop. Stay tuned as we track this. The USATF 100K Road Champs took place recently at the Mad City 100K on a 10-lap course. Adam Vedboncourt took the dub in a time of 6.37.53 on the men's side, with Naringa Kalunate winning for the ladies in 7.48.45 in arguably one of the most stacked 100K fields we've seen in a while. This served as a auto qualifier for the world's team, with the winner gaining a coveted spot for December. Not to be outdone, world record holder in the 50 mile, Charlie Lawrence, who was not in attendance this year at Mad City, but on a comeback from injury, seems to have been inspired by this weekend's events. He's calling his shot already, and seems to be on his way to a focused 100K effort at Worlds in December. Laz is on the road again, celebrating his 70th birthday by doing another LASCON, or Continental Crossing of the United States. He started March 31st in Delaware, and as of today, May 1st, he is 530 miles in, partway across Ohio, and he ended his latest post saying it was the best day of his life. 
It's the calm before the Coca Dona storm as we're just days away from the 2024 edition of the Coca Dona 250. The fields are stacked for what could be the most competitive 200 plus mile race we've yet seen on American soil. The men's winners of the first three editions of the race will be taking part Michael Versteeg, Joe McConaughey, and Michael McKnight, alongside other veteran athletes like Moab 240 champ Jeff Browning and 100 mile specialist Arlen Glick, who's stepping up for the first time to the 200 plus mile distance. For the ladies, 200 mile champ and two time Coca Dona finisher Mika Fuse is back, facing last year's second place finisher Eliza LaPierre, new to the distance but 100 mile champ Ashley Paulson, and a host of other strong ladies, including Rachel and Trinken who's a multi 48 hour champ and more. Be sure to bookmark this channel as we'll have close to 100 hours of live broadcast coverage of the Coca Dona 250 right here on Mountain Outpost. Michael Johnson recently announced he's launching a new track league that is a professional fan focused league and is starting to make some waves. Kyle Merber of the infamous Sidious Mag just announced his departure to join Michael in this new venture as the director of athletes and racing. Will be fun to see where this one goes. Well, that's it for this week's episode. Have a shitty week.